We will talk about the forehand volley technique. And for me, it has to be consistent. But more than that, it has to be consistent under pressure, whether you're going back and you're hitting a very difficult ball that's coming off a side wall and dropping down, or the balls come at you very quickly. Because the nature of the volley is you haven't got time to let it bounce, obviously. So you have to be able to play and have the technique that holds up under pressure, either quickly or in very difficult scenarios. How do you do that? Well, for me, the forehand volley is like the forehand drive, very simple. You're trying to keep the elbow slightly away from the body, the racket up slightly, slightly cocked wrist, not too flat, a little bit cocked, racket head pointing up, maybe slightly over, twist the racket head down, around the fingers so you've got the edge leading. And then now, I feel like I can get anyone. I can go high, I can go low and volley, I can go back and take it off the wall, I can go from anywhere. So it's not too far back, not too far forward, not too cocked and not too far away. So it's just in this nice middle area, which allows me to, oh, I have to do quickly. I have to punch quickly. I can punch it or I can go back and get it. You can do anything from there. So for me, the forehand volley technique has to be about being able to do all these things quickly or under extreme pressure, even more so than the forehand technique off the ground, because the nature of the volley is, is makes it harder. You have less time. You have less ability to reset yourself. You have less, less ability to use your wrist. You have less ability to do everything because you have to take it earlier, quicker, um, at the time you maybe don't want to because it has to be a volley. So we're gonna break the forehand volley drive technique into two, thing, two areas. One is taking it early and one's just taking it regularly. If I take it early and then don't follow through, that happens. So the ball's gonna hit the front wall and come down. It's not gonna to get to the back corner. So when I get to there, it has, to, it has to really release forward and through. So you have to let that racket head go as much as possible when that follow through to then be able to get it go through in a good length drive. Doesn't matter if your left foot, right foot, shoulders aren't particularly closed because they can't be because you're taking out here. If you do this, you can't get out there. The shoulders aren't as important. It's much more about that follow through and release. Now, if you're hitting it back in the sweet spot, sort of in your area where you feel comfortable, wherever you are, it's just basically like a straight drive, but in the air. So you've got a nice little chunk of area where you can get that racket head through, your, your technique's in a good place. You're basically thinking about a little bit of space, racket head up, make sure the bottom edge goes through, and then get that racket head through, get that racket head through. The biggest thing I'd say, especially if it's later or just normally, is don't second guess yourself on the forehand volley technique. If you set it up and you're ready, swing, let it go. Because what happens a lot of time, especially maybe off the serve or off the side wall, you get to here and you're in a good position, oh, and I'm gonna try and get it through. If you try and get it through from that position, you'll catch the side wall, you'll hit it back to yourself. You get it to here, and it's gonna be there, boom, through, through, through. Don't think about it, just let it go. So the technique for the forehand volley kill that I use is a lot about closing the face. Either closing the face or wrapping my racket head around it. I do one of two. It's either a case of getting the racket head through, so I'm just gonna go bang, and I'm gonna flatten it, and it's gonna go directly down and through. And then the follow through takes it exactly there. It's going straight down and through, boom, nice and simple. So you set it up in the same way, but you close the face, you flatten it, and direct, follow through goes again exactly where you want it to. The only other one I do is if it comes maybe slightly closer to me, I'm basically gonna go round it, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna get the racket head wrapping round the ball, and you can see, it gets to here, and the racket head's gonna go down and round. So it's still the kill, but it's boom, that. And you're coming round and down, and you're really cutting it in there severely. And that's probably about the only shot in my game I'm really thinking about going front wall, side wall, potentially rather than front wall floor. Because I've just thrown that down, it's come off there, bang, down and through. It's almost like a shot for nothing because if you've got an angle to hit it and you hit it hard with a good cut, it's gonna stay roughly in there, okay? You have to hit it reasonably well, but it doesn't have to be perfect. And you're gonna hit hard and low, it's gonna cut into the side wall, it's gonna come out to the middle, but forward in the middle, so your opponent's gonna be under a lot of pressure just trying to get it because it's gone there really quickly. So again, two shots on the kill, flat, or throw the racket head around it and go round and down through it. 
So thinking about the volley drops on the forehand and the technique that I like to use, again it goes back to what I started to learn on the forehand drop, which I wish I'd known 10, 15, 20 years ago, scarily. And that's basically the different ways of coming around the ball when you strike it. So letting the ball come into you, so it's nice and nice in your wheelhouse here, and you basically come under, inside, or round on the ground, and it's the same here. Under, inside, or round there. Inside's hard, I find that difficult. Under and round is pro are probably the easiest too. The tighter to the wall it is, the more I'm thinking about going round. So if it's closer to the wall, I'm really cutting round and down, which basically means it gets to the front wall first before coming across. Rather than coming under it, there's a good chance I might mishit it, side wall first or come out. So closer to the side wall, go round. More out here, I can come under, under it. Again, not thinking too much about my shoulders or my feet, thinking much more about the racket head going through and the follow through. The other one with the volley drop would be the early one. And that's just a case of literally the ball coming across, boom. And I try and think about racket face being slightly open and then just the follow through. So it's that. So it's there, through and down. There's no take back. It's not a real big swing. It's literally just because I'm taking it early, coming across, boom. And you just use that follow through and you see that bottom edge heading towards the corner. It's the earliness of the shot that's gonna make it difficult for your opponent as long as you hit it into the right area. Simpler the technique, the better. There, through, no real swing, follow through. So general technique for the forehand volley, very similar to what I would do for the forehand on the ground and off the ground, it's just raised a little bit. So I'm not taking the racket up, the wrist up, I'm not taking my shoulder up, I'm just lifting the arm. You see that, it's just going up a little bit. What that does is it takes it a little bit further away from my body, the elbow. So I'm not going up there, it's not the shoulder that's coming up, it's just coming, so it goes out a fraction more because I've created a little bit more space because I'm going up, I'm just lifting the arm. And what that allows it to do though is it means it's exactly, almost exactly the same shot as I'm hitting off the ground. So it feels comfortable, it feels normal, it doesn't feel like I'm hitting a different type of shot. So now that it's there, and then I'm just coming through and hitting it. Now I'm there, through and hitting it. Oh, it's dropped a little bit, I'm coming through and hitting it. So you get the benefit of using the same technique as your normal forehand off the ground and it doesn't change. So if that level of familiarity really helps. So we're thinking about the technique for the high volley. I think it changes slightly to how you normally set up for the normal one because you're going to have to really lift the arm up because if the ball's up here, you're going to have to get up to get it. One of the, the, the main things I think about is not extending the swing too much. So I'm not, I'm not really here. I'm trying to keep it out here on, on the left hand side of me. I'm trying to keep it within vision. I'm trying to keep this nice and relaxed and just up a little bit. So if this is the drive, this is the volley, then this is the high volley. So it just keeps going up on the same type of plane. Generally, you're gonna be on your back foot because you're going back. Try and make sure that when the technique comes through, you go through with it. What you don't wanna do is fall back and down and then drop the racket head. Any dropping the racket head means you're not really gonna have the options. You're gonna hit it low, fine, but that's all you're gonna be able to do. You're not gonna be able to get it going through, cut it cross court, throw in the boast. You're just gonna come down and like that, you lose control, right? So when you're back here, you get back and you gotta try and get that weight going through. You gotta somehow try and get that weight going forward and then let that follow through go forward. From there, it can come down. From there, it can go cross court, Nick, right? You can come down and round, but the actual goes through the ball and then you come down, right? You can choose what you want to do. You could even Mizuki. <laughs> which I can't play. The whole point is keeping that racket face, allowing it to go through that weight coming forward so that you can actually then choose which shot you want to play from such a difficult position. So a shot I like to play a lot for and think about with regard to forehand technique on the volley was the punch. Um, I played a lot of tennis as a kid before I played squash, even when I was still playing squash through to about 15, 16. And being at the net and playing doubles, you're just looking to punch, right? You're not looking to take a bigger swing because then it doesn't go anywhere, right? So you're looking to punch, punch, get forward and punch it. So that always held me in good stead with regard to my squash because I would look to volley everything. And when I volleyed everything, I wasn't taking extra time by going, I'm going to volley this, right? <laughs> what I would do is volley, bang, right? There's the volley, forehand, bang. So there's a straight drive and there's cross court drive and there's a drop. Didn't play the volley drop as often, <laughs> but the point was it was aggressive, it was quick, it was taking time away from my opponent and punching them probably deep again more often than not. 
And my opponents didn't like it because they felt like they were always under pressure. They felt like I had arms the length of go-go gadget arms, you know? It was like I was never letting the ball go past me. Reason being is because I wouldn't take a big swing. The punch volley allowed me to do that because I was compact and stepping forward, cutting the angles down and taking it early. So the technique on the forearm punch, I think is to take the arm up a little bit more. So whereas you normally say here, so if I'm thinking about it, you're gonna be a little bit behind, I'm gonna take it here, right? And then it's all about transfer. So whichever leg you are, boom, through, there, or two-footed, there, right? So you can see how direct and how simple that is. So you always go in the direction and the arm's going forward and out. And that's the way to really take the ball early, but with a great amount of control. Now you can do all sorts of swings with a forearm volley from the punch where there is no length of swing and it's just bang, it's like straight through from here through to much bigger swings to then basically get some more power, probably the higher ones. That's probably going to be your biggest swing. The only thing I'd encourage is that on the length of swing is you don't let that racket drag. So if you're going to the ball there, I'm going to show you this way. So if you're going to drag it ball here, you let the racket go there. Look how far behind it is. How's it going to get there? Catch up, right? It's going to have to do that. So if you do that, here comes the ball. Oh, no, I can't volley it now. I've got to go back. But it comes there, oh, I can volley that. See the difference? It's immediate. It's so obvious that you can volley it. You feel like it, your opponent knows it, and then you can actually do it. And then your shot will be so much better because you'll be more in control. So I'd encourage you on the forehand to condense the swing. Other than when you really need to, go back and you're going back there and you can hit it. Other than that, let's keep it tighter. Let's keep it tighter to the body, a fraction tighter to the body, a fraction further forward within the body so that you can actually have the option to volley out here. Because the whole point of the volley is to stop your opponent putting you under pressure, take it early, and put your opponent under pressure. And that's the way you can do it.